Anything done? Angela McGowan is a Fox News political analyst. Ben Wickler is a senior strategist for MoveOn.org and host of the Good Fight radio talk show. I want to start with this. We'll go first to you, Angela. Is gridlock good for politics? Does it serve both sides to run to their respective positions and dig in? Or ahead of the midterms, is it better to work together? You have to work together. Gridlock is never good unless you're trying to satisfy the liberals or unless conservatives are trying to satisfy Tea Partiers. With the midterm elections, Leland, um, they're going to have to work together. I don't think that we're going to have a government shutdown because self-preservation is the first law of nature and all politics is local. So you're going to have members of Congress who are up for re-election wanting to satisfy their local constituencies. Ben, you agree with that, or is the, does it serve the Democrats better to try to dig in and force another kind of government shutdown like we saw in the past? You know, I, I think all of us would like Congress to come back to Washington and do the job we're actually paying them to do to solve problems. But what we've seen from House Republicans over and over is that their first <laughs> priority is playing partisan politics, and they have no second priority. Oh, it, they don't. They have no second priority, and liberals have not played partisan politics. I think in Washington, D.C., Leland, we've seen a lot of partisan politics from both sides of the aisle, and especially from Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. Ben, speaking of Harry Reid, in terms of the Senate, do you see, as the senators are getting ready for some what are some very tight, contested elections coming up, states like Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, into Alaska, South Carolina, those kinds of places, is there a chance that the Senate Majority Leader is going to try and whip up some of his votes to actually do something, or you think he's going to continue the blocking mechanisms that the Republicans call a do-nothing Senate? <laughs> oh, well, I love the idea of the do-nothing Senate. The Senate has voted for comprehensive immigration. It's voted to increase the minimum wage on issue after issue that there's calls for government action on. Uh, the Senate has actually passed bills, and then they go in the House and they die. What the Republican is passing is frivolous lawsuits. You're hearing impeachment chatter, and now this uh, threat of another possible looming shutdown. I think that's a, a recipe not only for gridlock, but possibly for a political backlash from a people that are tired of the games and want something actually done. Angela, Leland. speaking of a political yeah. backlash mm -hmm. that could be coming, in terms of the way the House is set up now, Eric Cantor's gone. Does the new leadership, you think, have an ability to whip votes and to control their blocks a little bit better? Or are you going to see the kind of Tea Party constituency being able to hold things hostage in the House still? Leland, the best time was when we had Newt Gingrich as Speaker, Dick Armey as Majority Leader, and we had President Clinton in the White House where we passed the contract of America, contract with America, and President Clinton signed 70 percent. Having said that, Boehner's going to have to work with the House. He's going to have to work with the Tea Parties. He's going to have to satisfy the Democrats as well. He has a very hard job. But Harry Reid has a hard job because, again, you have North Carolina, as you said, South Carolina, Louisiana, Alaska, uh, Colorado. There are a lot of states in play, and the uh, majority leadership and the balance for the Democrats, it's actually in question. Ben, you agree that things are in question, or you think the Democrats are going to be able to hold on, depending on how things play out in Congress over the next couple of months? Well, there's no question that right now this is a toss-up. The fate of the Senate is in balance and the direction of Congress is in balance. I think the question is at this point whether the most extreme wing of the Republican Party will be able to hold the entire government hostage to an agenda most people wow, disagree with or even power. shut it down. If you're that happens again, well, we've seen what happened a year ago, right? <laughs> the government shut down. MoveOn.org got back then but, polled in 61 congressional districts and found 41 GOP districts where voters wanted a Democrat if the shutdown well, continued. All right, we're going to have to we're going to have to leave it there. We're going to have okay. to leave it there. But October 1st, government shutdown. November comes.